Hi folks, this is Clint of Bachelor Machines. Tonight I'm going to make an Ableton Live tutorial showing how I set up a basic DJ template uh, using Ableton Live and an APC40 controller. Um, you can see more about this and other things on the blog at blog.fwonk.com. Hope you enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so let's talk about how I set up my live session to uh, get ready for this DJing thing that I'm going to be doing. Um, first of all, um, if you haven't checked out those DJ tutorials from AbletonLife.com, um, I recommend you do so. They were really interesting. Um, I found them to be very useful. <clears throat> A couple of interesting things that I found out about while watching those tutorials, um, one of the big, big things I took away from it was how to organize your tracks. Because of course, like everybody, I have... Uh, all of them and organizing the folders and stuff and I've got all my tunes out here on the, in this drive what that guy recommended was actually to drop them into library tracks um, I found that really interesting because it gives you a good way to uh, to put them all together and have them for easy access in your sets and I think that's a great idea <coughs> oh, as you can see here what I've done is I've organized them by key and tempo and by type and I have the same tracks in both um, I just uh, you know Move, cut and paste and move things around until they're in the right order. On the on this left one, I've got them by key, and on the this right channel, I've got them by type. Now, when we say type, um, one of the things that uh, Ryan from AbletonLife.com recommended was that uh, you color code them by uh, what kind of music they are, which I have done. I don't have a ton of tracks in here because I I just I'm just getting started, uh, so I've only got probably uh, thirty some tracks in here. <coughs> um, but what you can see is that I've got uh, a, a few different colors and it really helps um, if you, when you're uh, looking for the for a track if you know what kind of track it is then you then you know what kind of color it is so if you're DJing on the fly you're you know oh I got a great idea I'm gonna do this song next then <clears throat> you can uh, you can zip down to it and say okay uh, this is a um, a disco house song and I know that my disco house songs are brown so there's there's the disco house ones Okay, grab it, you know, and uh, like so. Okay, so this is not going to be a full-on review of the APC40, um, but I did want to show a little bit of how it worked. Uh, so just uh, so I can sort of explain why I've set things up the way that I've set them up. Uh, what we've got here is the clip launch matrix for the APC40 which is uh, analogous to this um, the session view in Ableton Live. Um, so the buttons here correspond to the play buttons on this uh, clip matrix. So I'm just going to show you how it, how it works when I launch a track. I'm going to start this one down here low. I'm going to press this button. It's going to kick it off. And then um, these down here are the volume sliders for the tracks. So you can see I'm, I'm pulling that up and there it is. Now if I want to pull a different track in, um, all I got to do is um, I'm going to move it over here and um, I'm going to pull this one down and you can, you're going to see how this works. I'm going to uh, kick it off right here. So I just kick that on. And now I'm going to fade between them. So because we've done the work already to uh, to warp these tracks, like in those AbletonLife.com uh, tutorials, and we've uh, <coughs> also we've taken the work of actually making uh, knowing what keys these things are in, um, it's very easy to crossfade between the two different tracks. Um, of course, F sharp minor is the uh, relative minor of A major, so I knew that those two tracks would work well together.
Next, I want to show you how I created my uh, DJ effects for each uh, deck track. Uh, what fun would it be to, to DJ without having some effects to play with while the uh, songs are playing? So uh, what I've done is I've created an audio effects rack that I have saved off and I just put it on each of my deck tracks. And I'm going to show you how I created that audio effect rack. So first you draw an audio effect rack on your track, drop audio effects here. First thing I'm going to put on is a EQ3. Um, now classic DJ mixers are going to have a uh, the standard EQ knobs like th uh, three band EQ uh, so that you can kill the bass or you can kill the treble. Um, I don't really, I don't typically use the the high one, so I'm just going to use the uh, the low one here. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go into map mode, and then I'm going to map that guy to macro one. So as you can see, uh, that mapped automatically over to over to here on on the first of the eight knobs. Now the beautiful thing about the APC40 is that these here automatically jump to whatever device you're on so um, I'm already right here this is a uh, this knob here automatically became the first one on this device and if I select any device any audio effect rack these eight knobs are automatically going to map to these eight knobs which is fantastic it's so convenient um, but one thing that jumps up and jumps out at me about this thing is if uh, when you're in the in the thick of it and you're doing your DJing thing you don't necessarily want it to be super easy to make your bass 6 dB hotter than it would normally be in the song so uh, what I've done what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the max on this macro mapping to be 0 dB so now it goes all the way down from infinite to uh, 0 dB let's hear how it sounds on uh, this song which is Tammy and the T-Rex by my uh, uh, internet buddy paired or as I like to call him per so where are we at with this song let's jump into it so you can hear further along in that's useful both as a special effect and as a, uh, a technique for mixing tracks together because a lot of times you don't want the two kick drums in two different tracks to fight uh, so yeah that's a good knob to have on there I also like to have um, an, uh, two filters on here I'm gonna put two filters I'm gonna drag them in this audio effects rack Y2 I'm gonna make a low pass and a high pass Okay, those are in the perfect spot and then I'm going to map these I'm going to map the frequency of this one to macro 5 and his resonance to macro 6 and then I'm going to call them call him low pass change these low pass freak low pass res so now um, sorry, I did the wrong thing there. I don't want this envelope to. As you can see, I jumped to the device that, I, that had the focus, jumped it back here, and now this knob changes the frequency of the low pass filter. This one changes the resonance, so I can go, whoa! Really handy. Once again, let's jump into this track. a handy one to have. Now let's add, do the same thing with a high pass filter. Um, I'll change, change the name of this to high pass. And you'll see why that is in a minute. Um, it, when we look at the map mode it's going to be handy to know which one of these is which. So I'm going to make the uh, frequency there and the resonance on macro knob number eight
and change this over here so that it actually is a high pass filter that that's handy uh, geez. and then um, go back here select that and now we've got a high pass filter that goes all the way for um, all the way up and all the way down you can get yourself a uh, some resonance on that um, these these knobs I use for special effects these are not for really any DJ utility purposes okay what else do we got on here um, I talked before about a fade to gray effect um, that is a really good effect to have around I think that's going to be under performance in DJ in yeah um, this is a great effect to have around when you're make, doing DJing I'm gonna drag him in here he's only got one knob um, as we said in that other tutorial that I did earlier, you can have um, racks within racks and map macros to macros. I'm going to uh, map this to macro 3 in here. So now there's that. Let's hear what effect that has on the sound, just so we can remember what that is like. Oh, i got to select the device. What just happened? Oh, here it is. So that's a, a combination of a high pass filter and a uh, ping pong echo, and it's very handy to have um, when you're uh, transitioning between tracks as a good emergency one. Like, I gotta get this track out of the way right now, and I don't want to just slam it down because that's gonna sound unnatural. So that's a good one to like sort of just wash it away. It's it's uh, very handy for that. Uh, now, um, the last one that's really important, um, at least for the way that I'm doing my set, is uh, is a beat repeat. Um, now. Uh, I got this idea while I was watching um, Grizz, who is a Lansing uh, DJ and uh, producer, uh, a very uh, talented one. Um, and beat repeat, of course, is not a you know a novel effect, but he did an interesting thing with it. Uh, he's got it set up so that when he turns the knob, it turns it on, and then when he turns the knob further, it uh, it changes the value of that beat repeat. And so that's really useful. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add beat repeat to my rack here. And then I'm going to change the chance to 0%. So um, if, if you have a chance of 0%, that, that means that the, the regularly scheduled beat repeats will never trigger, um, which is, that's good. Um, and then uh, I'm going to map the repeat function to this macro 4 here. Um, so what's that, what that's going to do is when I turn this knob, it's going to turn on the repeat. And that means that it will always, uh, when the repeat button is engaged on a beat repeat, it makes it always uh, continue repeating. So I can engage the beat repeat by turning the knob, and I can turn it off by doing that. Now. Uh, that would be handy on its own, but you can also map the same knob to uh, more than one function by, by doing this. If you click on the map mode, then I'm going to change this value here to 5. Now, if you watch the way that this works, okay, this value is 0. You can tell by these, uh, these like pretty lights here that it's not turned on at all. <laughs> when I turn this, it's going to turn it on. So when it when I turn it like basically past zero, then the effect turns on. So that's cool because that means that I can turn it all the way off by turning it all the way down, and then I've got an entire knob's worth of uh, rotation to play with. So now I'm going to map the grid to repeat also, and now that's on there. Um, so now I can uh, you can you have all these values now. A lot of these are not going to be musical, musically useful values for me. I don't need a one two hundred fifty sixth note as part of my uh, as part of my set. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just change this to a quarter note, um, which it's probably easiest to do it like that. And then I'm going to change this one over here to 
to a 30 second note and that's probably all all the rotation that I'm going to need so now if it's all the way left and I turn it on then it's at um, then it's at like a a quarter note there and if I turn it all the way to the right then it's a 30 second note now there's also a really good button to have I'm glad they put this on here in a beat repeat there's this no triplet button um, if you're working in a set like doing house music of the type that I'm doing um, having triplets like that is gonna like really mess you up if you're trying to um, make your beat repeated beats match with another track so I'm gonna turn on the no triplet button okay if I've done this right then you should be able to hear that this is doing something cool here it's a big if So that, that's just a handy effect to have around. Now, as you might have noticed, one thing I changed there is I changed it from mix to insert. Um, I, that's that's how I like to do it. A lot of people might choose to use mix instead of insert. I, I like to have it so that it can that it completely overrides the sound of the track when I turn that knob. Now, something else that I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this guy so that he is the first effect. Now, note that this doesn't make any difference as far as its knob mappings. That didn't change a thing in terms of which knobs control what. Um, but the good thing about this is because it's before the filters in the signal chain, now I've got some more options in terms of uh, the sonic characteristics of that repeated sound. So let's, let's hear what I can do with it now. So as you can see, that is uh, starting to create some expressive potential in this uh, this knob matrix over here. It gives me a lot of options in terms of what I can do to the sound as it's playing. <laughs> 